Costa Cohen here and today I will be giving you a guide on how to build up your settlements in Total War Warhammer 3. I won't go into detail for every race, just some general guidelines that will be applicable to most races in the game. Now there isn't a single best way of building up your settlements. It mostly comes down to what you want to do with your province, whether you want to recruit units from it or you just need it to make your income. There is also the factor of what you need in your campaign and how many resources you can invest in constructing your settlements. There are six different building types you can construct in the game. Infrastructure buildings, basic military buildings, advanced military buildings, defensive buildings, resources and landmarks. First, let's talk about infrastructure buildings, the green buildings. The general consensus is that you want to build the income building in your settlements first. The more income you have, the more armies you can field and the more territory you can conquer. Growth in Warhammer 3 is quite quick, even with races that grow more slowly, so it is usually not essential to build growth buildings in every province. And the only race which does benefit from growth buildings in every settlement would be the Dawi. Usually you just want to prioritize growth buildings in settlements that only have two regions and will take longer to grow. But if there is a port in the region, then you don't even need to construct a growth building as ports give you growth as well. The only time you will want to prioritize growth over income is if you already have decent income and want to grow a province quickly to be able to recruit better units. Public order really does vary from race to race and on your difficulty level. The higher the difficulty, the more public order issues you will have. Hard difficulty gives you minus 2, very hard minus 4 and legendary minus 8 public order. If you are playing on lower difficulties, there is no real reason to build these buildings, unless they provide you with more bonuses such as tradable resources or income. But you still shouldn't build them first. There are some exceptions though, firstly with the Chaos Dwarves, where you want to try and build these buildings in every province. They shouldn't be the first building you construct, but you should definitely have them, as high public order lowers the rate at which you lose labor. Then there are the Dark Elves, whose public order is always bad due to slaves and is barely manageable on the highest difficulties, where you need to build public order buildings wherever you can. When it comes to your basic military buildings, the red buildings, it mostly depends on where your province is located, the stage of your campaign and whether or not you can recruit units from just your settlement buildings. If it is the early stage of the campaign and you can just make do with units you can recruit without a recruitment building, then you can delay constructing them and instead just get more income buildings to be able to field more armies. If you can't make do with just basic units, or you can't recruit any good units such as with the Dawi, you can only recruit miners from their settlement building, then construct recruitment buildings in provinces from which you will begin recruiting these units. This might be extremely obvious, but you don't need these buildings in provinces from which you won't be recruiting units as they are taking up a building slot while providing you almost nothing. But there are two cases where you will want to construct these buildings regardless. One of which is if it will provide you with hero's capacity and the other I will mention later on. When it comes to advanced military buildings, the blue buildings, they can act as a recruit building, a building that provides you with bonuses or both of these. Usually they can only be built in settlements that are at tier 3 or higher and can be built up to tier 5. These buildings are usually the main way you increase your hero's capacity and enable you to recruit them. In comparison to the rest of the building types, these are the most expensive buildings you will be able to construct in your provinces. So before you begin constructing them, check if they will provide you with enough bonuses to make building them worth it. They are most valuable if they provide you with bonuses such as global recruit capacity, increase your hero's capacity or give you units that are absolutely essential for your armies. If you are in the very late stage of a campaign and have money to throw, now is the time you can start constructing basic and advanced military buildings in all of your provinces. Aside from giving you hero's capacity or global recruit capacity, there is also a hidden sort of mechanic in the game, where if you have 10 buildings from which you recruit the same unit, that unit will have its global recruit duration lowered by one turn. 
You might have even noticed this with units you can recruit just from settlement buildings. Where if you own 10 settlements, you can recruit that unit globally in one turn instead of two. Defensive buildings are really up to you if you want to construct them, where and how. Usually in hotly contested regions and you would then demolish it when the region is no longer in danger. Except in the case of Skaven where you want every settlement to have a defensive building because there really is no downside in doing so. In the case of resource buildings, you have to watch out for three things. One, whether or not you're already selling all of the goods from that resource building. If not, then don't upgrade or construct another one, as you will not be able to sell the goods you get from it. Two, does that building give you extra income regardless of whether or not you're selling all of these goods? Because if so, it is still worth building up, but only after your main income building. And three, if it provides you with some global bonuses, such as upkeep cost reduction for certain units, in which case check if you are fielding many of those units, and if you are, then construct that building. Finally, in the case of landmarks, it will depend whether or not that landmark will give you useful bonuses for its cost and if it is worth constructing or just a regular building. As not every landmark in this game is worth constructing. Some just give you very few bonuses, while others give you negatives as well. Really good landmarks are those that provide you with massive income or give all of your units and armies combat stats. An example of a very good landmark would be the income building for Dawi in Mount Gunbad, while a very bad landmark would be the unique building chain Belagar gets in Carrick Eight Peaks as it gives you no bonuses that can help you with your campaign and you will be better off just getting a regular building over it. So a brief summary before I give you an example of what a province should look like. You want to construct any buildings which give you income first, growth only if your province will develop slowly or if you want to grow it faster. Public order depends on your race and difficulty level. Basic military buildings only if you need to recruit units or increase your hero's capacity. And advanced military buildings only if they provide you with useful bonuses. And an example of what a late game province should look like and the order in which I constructed the buildings. In the Shifting Sand province, I built an income building in every settlement first. I built resource buildings afterwards as they provide me with even more income, even though we aren't selling all of the goods those buildings are producing, they are providing us with income on top of those goods, then you have an amazing landmark which gives you income and lowers the recruit duration by one turn in the province. So instead of building an advanced military building to increase my hero's capacity, I built the military building to recruit Hellstorm rocket batteries, so I can recruit them in one turn from this province. My public order is decent, so there is no need to build any public order buildings. Growth is really good as well, which means that the tier 1 growth building really isn't needed, so I should have gotten rid of it sooner. Lastly, I built the barracks to increase our empire captain hero capacity and the armories as they increase both my local and global recruit capacity. So that way I can make better use of this as a recruit province. Well, this is the most basic guide for building up your settlements I could give you. There are obviously differences in buildings between different races, some of which would need an entire video dedicated to them, but the general sentiment remains the same. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to subscribe for future content. Thank you all for watching and until next time. Thorns, or fights as one.